Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Thanks for joining us for another video. Latest Manchester United news and what we can see out there. John Myrtle yesterday was definitely leaving Manchester United. Today, the Telegraph is saying he's staying. What do you make of it all? Well, you know, uh, I expect this uh, tip for tap. People PR putting out he's going. People saying he's staying. It depends which camp you're in. But it's a transitional period. I expect to see reports like this. I do think John Myrtle will be staying. Uh, with his team around him. I'm thinking at the end of the day, he will be ousted uh, further down the line, but not just yet. He needs people staying in. Yes, Sir Jim Ratcliffe wants his people in there, but so do the Glazers. Yeah, you're just saying that you expect him to go in the near future, did you say? But is this about now just stabilising the club and not making too many changes so there's even more of a damaging impact on the pitch? Yeah, I think what you, you have to have sta stabilisation uh, in the club, especially in a period like this. Uh, you can't have everyone thrown out. Yes, there's targets there, what we all want to be thrown out of the club because they failed to do the job, not been good enough. You know, if you look at John Murtaugh, who's been there 10 years, what would you rate him? Uh, well, I'd rate it as poor. That's how yeah. I would see his uh, work. But he has to be in place, in my opinion, uh, to work things out. January transfer window's coming here. He's got the men around him. What, pay the checks? Uh, he picks the players. These players, reports of players wanting to leave in January. So to have somebody there uh, in place, stay there, John Murto, get it do done and look around and look for the person who's going to replace him. And then that transitional period will be smooth. We've got rid of the head, which is Richard Arnold. And that was quite right. So Jim Ratcliffe will get his man in, uh, put him in place, and then everyone should work together towards the aims. And the aims will be in that by the time the summer comes, new people in place. Yeah, I think the heads, the Glazers. I think Richard Arnold was the flunky, to be honest with you. And he wasn't a very good flunky at that. But with John Murto, I think, like you say, I do tend to agree with you, yourself. I think these changes might be a bit too quick, a bit too sudden to make, especially with John Murto. You've got to look at in and around the training ground. He's probably one of the highest ranking officials there at Manchester United at the training ground. So, you know, surely uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Brailsford, if he does come on board as well, and other people who maybe take over Richard Arnold's role, they are going to need to take up and, and take a, you know, a deep look into what's been going on there in the recruitment side over the years at Manchester United because he's had a major, major part to play, John Murto, and he's culpable for the failings on the pitch. Oh, without a doubt, he's culpable. He's culpable for the players what have come in, what have been identified. I mean, if, if you look at some of the players there, we've been signing players who have been injured. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so he is cul culpable, but we don't need everyone being thrown out. If you get everyone thrown out, it's just more chaos uh, and then people just run amok. He needs to be in place. I don't want him there. I think he should be moved, but over time, uh, I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe and the Glazers have been battling it, really. I think they've been arguing about getting him out now. I think the Glazers have held on to certain people. I think that's how it's going to be. Yes, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's going to have a big, big say in how this club's being run. But at the moment, I think the Glazers are holding fire uh, with certain people to fire. I think they want their own people in there uh, to just to see uh, the smooth transition uh, and be aware of what's going on on a daily basis. As we know, the Glazers aren't there at Old Trafford, never have been. Uh, and I think with Sir Jim Ratcliffe putting his people in place, the Glazers want some of their, uh, let's say, their lackeys still there. But a transitional period is difficult and it will be chaos. Yeah, there's not too many stars, so to speak, on his CV either, really, for John Murto, is he? If you look at it over the years, yeah, we've had a couple of youngsters come through. You know, we've got the likes of Halle Andro Garnaccio, currently in the first team, looks a player for the future, definitely. We have got Hannibal in and around there. I'm not too sure whether that was under the guidance of John Murto, though maybe it was Nicky Butt just beforehand. But, you know, for me, going forward, you're looking at other teams as well. You know, look at Aston Villa. You know, the lad they've gone and got from Sevilla, that Moncha, to work alongside Unai Emery. Yeah. You know, you look at Edwards, you know, in the past at Liverpool, the players that he brought in worked alongside Jurgen Klopp. You look at Tiki over at uh, Man City, you know, the way they work with Barcelona, you know, you're looking at, like, the best in class there, aren't you? People who know the game and know how to get things done. And you look at John Murtaugh, you know, this, this bloke come from Everton on the recommendation of David Moyes, and somehow, roughly... 10 years later, is still here at the football club and the failings that we've had on the pitch in terms of recruitment, 
you know, I don't understand how he's lasted this long, to be honest. Well, I don't know how he's lasted this long, to be honest, but at the end of the day, he's there. Uh, them names you mentioned, mm. uh, really good names in football. They've done well in their positions. And Sir Jim Ratcliffe will uh, be looking at bringing the same type of people to yeah. run the organisation. But Murto, like you say, been brought in uh, after the David uh, Moyes era and he still survived. And I just don't know. I think for me, I just don't know. I just don't know you, how. You look at that Frank, Frankie de Jong saga the, uh, the other summer. Him and Richard Arnold running around, chasing around Barcelona, trying to get that deal done. And it was going on for two, three, four weeks of just pictures of them being over there. Never mind the whole saga in the yeah. summer. And for me, that just put, put a proper dent on their reputations for me, that they can't get these deals done. And I think European clubs, the top ones around Europe, just see them as clowns, basically, and people they can just have over and have on puppet strings. Yeah, it seems that way. Uh, United have always had a tax on transfers, we know that. Yeah, but I agree. The, but, but, but the way uh, John Murto and that I've sort of paid for players and that mm. it's been uh, way way too high and that's been a large part of his job as well John yes. Murto you know Failed. making sure that they don't overpay on players yet he's not been the chief negotiator to do with transfers I think that's currently Matt Hargreaves and in the past it was Matt Judge yeah. we even had someone in a temporary role called Tom Keane Michael Keane's brother who a lot of you might remember for Man United playing at Everton now yeah. Yeah. so it's been up and down it's not been all his fault it's not all been other people's fault like Richard Arnold but it's been mishaps throughout the football club in decision making where it's just not happening and we need that freshness now new ideas and a strategy going forward you say it's a combination and it's not all John Murto yes it is John Murto's fault it is <clears throat> Richard Arnold's fault they are the people in charge yeah. they look at the subordinates below him right and they have not done the job if you look uh, Eric Tenag is coming over £400 million has been spent so at the end of the day, John Murto is bringing these players in. He's looking on either on behalf of Eric Ten Hag or he's looking on behalf of the club. But the money, the way it's been spent, the yeah. way the people at the top have just let it be spent and overspending, yeah. it has got to stop. And I think it will stop. And so Jim Ratcliffe will be given time. I think he wants everyone in now, but I think he's being pushed. I think the Glazers are, are stopping mm. everything what Sir Jim Ratcliffe wants at the moment. So we need a bit of time. Bit of transition, Murto. Yes, you're still sat there, but you will be going, and all the team around you. Do you think it's a good start then? It being the way it is with Richard Arnold leaving, he brings in his own CEO, CEO, CEOs then in place yes. to then take a proper deep dive into it himself. Have a look what's going wrong in certain departments. Who needs to go? Who needs a fresh face coming in? So well, that's the best start. Yeah, that's the best start. Richard Arnold going. It, so Jim Ratcliffe brings his man in. He's got a man at the top, mm. a man who is directing and understanding what's going on and will have a clear idea. But that clear idea will not come until at least the summer. Uh, so if if you think everything's going to change now, it's not. We we are listen. This club yeah. is being run and it's been run badly for a long time. Yeah. And there's lots of people in different jobs inside Manchester United, right? What will be out, but it will take time. But he's got his man at the top. Mm. He'll bring him in, yeah. uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. We have got to say though. Still got to be sceptical. We've got to still remember who's in majority charge of this football club. Yes. And for them not to have a say at all, who becomes the next CEO, I find highly doubtful. So, you know, you're sort of like treading on eggshells there. There's been a couple of names mentioned, like John claude Blanc, yeah. etc. He's got a great CV, high, high positions at PSG, chief exec as well at Juventus. So he knows what he's doing, the bloke, doesn't yes. he? Yeah, he's it been is. involved in that environment of best in class. So, you know, let's just wait and see on that front. But again... You know, if the Glazers aren't going to have a say in it, you know, I'd run round with Shaw naked, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, well, listen, it, it, the, the problem we've always got is the Glazers there have got the final say. Uh, but having someone in charge uh, in the CEO position mm -hmm. will give Sir Jim Ratcliffe a clear run at, at well, just changing the club, yeah. changing the strategy, changing the transfer strategy. But one thing I will say before we go is that transfer strategy... Right, nothing will happen. There will be no money, as far as I'm concerned. The reports I see out there, right, everyone sort of needs to calm down. Mm -hmm. I can't see any transfers being money being spent on transfers in January. Yeah. I, th I think it's all a matter of like, let's just consolidate, let's see where we are, uh, and slowly build this company, uh, build this football club, and let's see how the summer comes then, and let's see where we are as a football team.
Yeah, no, I agree with you on that point of view. Not that I, I want it to be like that. I'd rather us get some... I don't mean like just uh, big stars into the football club in January. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for young, talented players that, you know, that can produce and go on to another level, two or three levels, yeah. you know, by being at Manchester United and improving the team. But, yeah, coming into January, it could be like last summer, you know. Yes. Not last summer, last January, yeah. Wegos, a bits of loan signings, etc. But, you know, let's hope in the future something can get put in place soon so we start seeing the benefits of things you know Paul Mitchell's been muted you know he's been at obviously Tottenham uh, Southampton RB Leipzig yeah. been at Monaco I think he was having a stint in the States at one point even uh, Brazil but you know let's see is he best in class there'll be people out there who know a lot more than me on Paul Mitchell there's other names mentioned Dougie Freeman from Crystal Palace is he best in class I don't think he is to be honest with you has he done a good job at Crystal Palace he probably has done in bringing two or three yeah. maybe four faces into that football club considering where they are in the Premier League but this is Manchester United and a lot of fans out there who aren't United fans probably hate us saying that but this is Manchester United we're the biggest football club in the world and we need the best in class well we do need best in class can I imagine yeah and bashing going on out there now yeah probably <laughs> right the thing is we do need best in class right is Dougie Friedman you know you just mentioned him there Crystal Palace yeah. as he worked with the world class players as he worked with a you know a big club like Man United mm. no he hasn't uh, doesn't keep he'd, he'd been learning on the job yeah. learning curve for him we don't want that yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't want here all right so Jim Ratcliffe has to bring in best in class uh, and it will take time uh, at the end of the day we've just got to be patient uh, and stories about who's coming in who's going out and all that will carry on people's PR team they'll be pushing things out there so it's just a matter of sitting and waiting yeah if we need well we all want a different direction especially on the football pitch and you know if we're going to see anything like that you know the decision making at the top from the Glazer family it needs to be left completely alone, in my opinion, and to be given to Sir Jim Ratcliffe if that's the way it's going to be, because I can't see much change if the Glazers have got a say in it. But I just thought we'd do a quick video today on the latest news. Let's have it right. There's not really much out there. The England international break's done now, isn't it? Was that the last game? Didn't last even night? watch him. Yeah, I've just seen something from Aaron Maguire, to be honest with you, bulldozing some kid over, which, you know, yeah. I had a bit of a chuckle about. But Well, I've not, I've not watched any internationals, you know what I mean? I've just been having a little look at the yeah. news and that, and it's like, uh, Murto's out, Murto's in, this, that and the other. You just don't know. My head was spinning on on some of the stories out there. Uh, but this is what, what it is. To me, it's clear. Murto's staying and he'll be part of the transition. So that that's why we're reporting this now yeah. and our, our opinions on it. Yeah, we have a view to a P45 later on down the line. But yeah, just thanks for joining us today. Like I say, do a quick video just to get you involved. Not done one for a few days. So yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please smash a like, help support the channel. If you've enjoyed any of the content as well and you've not subscribed, think about subscribing and get involved in the chat most importantly. We love seeing and interacting with you guys in the chat and this is what it's all about, Red. So. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. So hopefully see you there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.